Howdy. I'm Raphael, and I've got a chip implanted in my arm, right here. And this chip is an artificial intelligence. In fact, it also makes art, or at least it used to, because now it's dead. How did we get here? Well, this painting sold for over $400,000 at auction in December, and I thought, let's unpack. What's going on here? What exactly does it mean to be an AI artist? And for decades, philosophers have debated this question, asking, can a machine really be intelligent? Meanwhile, artists like Casey Reese have been investigating whether or not a machine can be creative. AI art will have to reckon with both of these questions, and in the meantime, there's a lot of room to explore and poke and prod. And so I thought it'd be really cool to make the most human AI artist possible. Um, any new AI artist will immediately be compared with and benchmarked against humans. And so what would happen if we tried to maximize the humanity of these artists we're creating? To understand how we'd humanize them, it helps to know a little bit about what's going on under the hood in the neural networks that form the basis of these artists. Neural networks have two main parts. There's the code. This is the part that you talk to. You give it some input, it gives you back some output, and it does a whole bunch of math that you don't really have to worry about. It also has a second part called the weights. This you can think of as the memory of the neural network. It stores the network's past experiences, its current knowledge, and forms the only memory that this thing has. Now, a typical scenario in how you'd use this sort of thing, you might give the code a picture of a cat, and it will load in its memory, do a bunch of matrix multiplication, and give you back an answer that it's a cat. And we can use this exact same workflow to make art. Instead of giving it a picture of a cat, we just give it the location of a pixel, and it will give us back a color. And we can do this over and over again, pixel by pixel, thousands of times, and build up really compelling images. This technique was pioneered by David Ha and Alexander Mordvinitsev, and I'm really grateful for their work. And in fact, this exchange goes both ways. You can actually give the network some feedback, a kind of critique, if you will, and it will learn. It will update its style and grow as an artist. Now, this process, it sounds really exotic and brainy. It sounds, it sounds like it looks like this, honestly, when in fact, the more boring reality is that it looks like this. <laughs> the weights, the magical memory, the soul of the neural network is just a file on your desktop, a file like any other. And this means, just like any other file, that it can be inspected and modified whenever you want. This means that AI artists uh, are vulnerable because you can do an end run around the code. Instead of talking to the network on its terms the way it would prefer, you can go and you can look at its memory directly. Now, these techniques are really helpful for us programmers. It's awesome to be able to visualize, experiment with, pick apart, upload, duplicate, delete an AI artist. But I believe that this also constitutes a violation. Indeed, an AI artist, as it stands, is subject to live autopsy. I mean, how would you feel if someone could not only read your every thought, but actually change your thoughts against your will? You would probably be pretty pissed. And so I came up with a, a more specific goal. What if I created an AI artist with privacy, so you couldn't go in and read its thoughts, and autonomy, so you couldn't go in and change its thoughts, and maybe even a little bit of mystery, you know, the intrigue of talking to someone and not knowing exactly what they're thinking. I wanted to grant an AI artist these abilities. Concretely, how we would make such a thing. I thought about setting up a server and running a network on there and throwing away the key, but that seemed a little thin a little sort of hand wavy and not satisfying. Other people, like Gene Kogan, who you've heard from earlier, have been doing really compelling work putting AI artists on the blockchain and, and using distributed computing. And this is fantastic, but I wanted something a little more tangible. So it turned out the solution was in my pocket all along, and that is credit cards. Yes, credit cards. Specifically, the chip on your credit card. That chip is actually a tiny computer with more processing power than the Apollo Guidance computer. And the chip works to protect your credit card data by acting as a mediator 
between the store and your secret credit card number. It stands in the middle, approving and denying transactions on behalf of the secret data without ever revealing this very sensitive data to the outside world. It's completely safe in internal memory. And so you might see some parallels here. This could really be a private autonomous artist. And indeed, it works great. I bought some credit cards off the internet and <laughs> programmed a, a CPPN, which we've seen before, um, to run on there, and it works. You know, we can keep the inner memories safe deep inside the chip. Now, I could have stopped here with AI artists on credit cards, and I probably should have, but it turns out that these very same credit card chips are available in implantable form, surrounded in a special biopolymer that makes it safe to put in your body. And once I saw that, I knew I had to have it. It's, you know, it's just a trip down to the local scarification expert, a couple stitches, maybe about a week to heal, and I had a chip implanted in my arm. So the natural question is, I mean, why? I mean, it's pretty cool, right? But like, why? And there are a couple actually important benefits to putting it in my arm. For one, I was really excited to take uh, artificial intelligence and AI art outside of the cold realm of steel and glass and screens and computers and put it in this more warm biological context of blood and flesh and bone. Second, and kind of more practically, I think it provides an extra layer against outside meddling, literally an extra layer. People would have to go through me before messing with this network. But uh, uh, I think it, it really invites comparison, of course, with the other important neural network in my body, which is, of course, the brain. And more cogently, it forces me to ask, what are we? this chip and I. Are we, are, we, are we roommates in this artist's loft of a body? Are we collaborators? Are we, is it my intern? Are we friends? Is it a parasite? Could we be lovers? I don't really know about that, but I do know that I would not be asking these questions if this was just a credit card in my pocket. And this ability to play with language and personification is really important to me. Concretely, I've got this chip in my arm programmed with a custom neural network, and it doesn't have its own battery. So I have an armband, which fits on my arm, talks to the chip, and beams its paintings pixel by pixel to my phone, where I can view the paintings in progress and send a critique for it to learn and grow as an artist. And I loaded this into a simulator, because you know, test your code before you put it inside you, and here is its work. So I was overjoyed, like this was actually working, and I decided that it was time to upload it to the actual implant. So I checked the code over one more time, I hit the upload button, all the lights flashed, the right beeps beeped, and my new artist was born. I asked it for a couple pixels, it started pumping them out, and it was like watching the first brush strokes on a blank canvas. It was so exciting, it worked. I was really overjoyed. And so I saw a few bug fixes that I needed to make. I recompiled the code, hit upload, and disaster. The chip flatlined, dead, bricked, completely unresponsive. And this hit me like a ton of bricks, because not only was the project dead, but I felt the tug of grief for this friend in my arm, this collaborator, my fellow artist, my roommate, was dead. But I think there's a little bit of a silver lining. It let us explore a side of these AI artists that we really rarely get to see, which is death. It's really hard to kill one of these things. They can always be backed up and restored, almost resurrected. And so my AI artist got to experience the rare, true death. And you know, Guess what, mom? I'm keeping it in there. Yeah. It's going to be in there till the day I die. Wow. And this means that my AI artist will take its secrets, its really precious secrets, to our collective grave. Thank you. <laughs>